Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm sure you've seen some of these headlines. The return of the SpaceX crew Dragon Capsule Endeavor on October 25th, 2024 went mostly to plan. It ended a 235 day mission to the ISS, landing went well, everything appeared to be normal. But shortly thereafter, all four Crew-8 astronauts were taken to the hospital for evaluation. And that is a bit unusual. So today's video is going to look into the hospitalization of these four astronauts, as well as some recent headlines about the health of Boeing's Starliner astronaut, Sunny Williams. People are making some claims about how she's doing up there. Seems like a lot of headlines, a bit scant on details. So let's take a look at the health of all of these astronauts and see if there's anything worth being concerned over. So as I said, on October 25th, 2024, the Crew Dragon capsule Endeavor returned to Earth, splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Pensacola, Florida. The capsule returned with four astronauts, Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, Jeanette Epps from NASA, and Alexandra Grabenkin from Roscosmos, Russia's space agency. However, shortly thereafter, NASA announced that all four astronauts were going to be taken to Ascension Sacred Heart Pensacola, a hospital in Florida, for evaluation. In a press conference, NASA said that this was being done out of an abundance of caution. But my question, and I'm assuming your question too, would be, what was different? What required the caution for this landing as opposed to all the other landings, which have become, I don't want to say routine, but like kind of routine by now? And at the time, all they seemed to be able to say was, during routine medical assessments on the recovery ship, the additional evaluation of the crew members was requested out of an abundance of caution. Now, three out of the four astronauts were pretty quickly released and flown to the Johnson Space Center in Houston. And that's where they were gonna go anyway if the hospitalization hadn't happened. However, one crew member, which we only know as a NASA astronaut, stayed overnight at the hospital as a precautionary measure. And NASA said to protect the crew members' medical privacy, specific details on this individual's condition or identity will not be shared. But the next day, NASA said that the final crew member was released from the hospital and joined their other crew members at the Johnson Space Center. NASA stated that the crew member is in good health and will resume normal post-flight reconditioning with other crew members. NASA also said later in an emailed statement that this update will be the final update on this matter. So it's kind of a mystery. I'm not sure when or how we're ever gonna know exactly what happened here. I guess unless the individual astronaut decided to make it public? Long duration spaceflight affects the body in multiple ways, from vision problems to decreases in bone density and muscle mass. NASA and other space agencies have known about these effects for a long time and have been working hard to try and mitigate them. For example, that's where all that exercise comes in for the astronauts that are aboard the ISS. Now, another factor here is that Crew 8 lasted longer than a typical ISS stint, which is about six months. And much was made, mostly on Twitter and Reddit, about how the astronauts looked when they exited the space capsule. Astronaut Michael Barrett had trouble standing and Jeanette Epps was a little unsteady when she exited the capsule. In addition to the individuals standing around the outside, there's also a recovery team member inside the capsule assisting with the egress. And that is NASA astronaut uh, Mike Barrett. This is the, uh, he is the veteran on this space flight. The other three flyers on board crew eight were, were all rookies. I do believe that is NASA astronaut Jeanette Epps, who is next out. Yep, Jeanette Epps was the next one out. So Ale Alexander Grubankin will be next. Again, this was her first space flight. But I'm like, they were in space for 
235 days. When Frank Rubio and Scott Kelly each returned from their year in space respectively, they both had to be carried off in chairs because it was extremely difficult, if not impossible, for either of them to stand. These are dudes that are hitting that microgravity treadmill for a couple of hours every day. Space is hard and unforgiving on the human body. Plus, the current all-time record holder for longest continuous days in space, Valery Polyakov, spent nearly double the Crew 8's time in space at 437 days. And obviously, not all bodies are created equal, and this stay on the ISS was much longer than they originally anticipated. So this whole thing just might be, as NASA said, out of caution. Or maybe one or more of the astronauts requested it, like we don't really know. Which brings me to Sonny Williams. Now I have seen some headlines and articles that are granted from places like the Daily Mail and the New York Post that are something. Basically just kind of posting a sort of unflattering picture of her and then having headlines that are like, doctors concerned, gaunt transformation, possible superbug, just really fun headlines like that. Also, there were people putting out this picture of her wearing an eye patch to be like, see, something's wrong, something's wrong with her eye. But the photo was taken on Halloween. It was her attempt at a pirate costume, <laughs> attempting to dress up for Halloween in space. Internet, internet. So NASA put out a statement on November 7th, 2024, addressing these concerns. That statement stressed that Williams, the commander of the ISS's current Expedition 72, is in good health and that NASA is not tracking any concerns with her or any of the other astronauts aboard the ISS. And as of this recording, there are currently four NASA astronauts and three Russian cosmonauts currently living on the station. The statement said all NASA astronauts aboard the International Space Station undergo routine medical evaluations, have dedicated flight surgeons monitoring them, and are in good health. As we all know, Williams and fellow NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore arrived at the ISS on June 6, 2024, aboard Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. The duo was supposed to come home just a week or so later, but problems with Starliner's thruster system extended their stay and eventually convinced NASA to bring the Boeing capsule home uncrewed. That happened on September 6, 2024. Williams and Wilmore, meanwhile, will stay aboard the ISS until February 2025, when they'll return to Earth with the two astronauts of SpaceX's Crew-9 mission. And according to NASA, there are plenty of supplies, including food, to support Williams and Wilmore through the end of their unexpectedly long stay. And even a pulmonologist, Dr. Vinya Gupta, told the Daily Mail that any weight loss might just be due to her environment. What you're seeing is somebody that I think is experiencing the natural stresses of living at a very high altitude, even in a pressurized cabin for extended periods. Her cheeks appear a bit sunken, and usually it happens when you've had a sort of total body weight loss. Gupta said that Williams' apparent weight loss may just be due to the fact that she's not consuming as many calories as she's burning, or maybe due to other personal reasons, none of which is seeming to have any effect on her abilities to perform her duty as an astronaut and ISS commander. At least that's not a concern that NASA has raised at all thus far. And as I said earlier in this video, space is hard. It is super hard and super unforgiving on the human body. And that effect can manifest itself in all different kinds of ways. So I'm just not loving these headlines talking about her gaunt cheeks. I feel like it's like, a person living in Antarctica, like, you know, roughing it in a base down there and for like six months, and then they take a selfie of themselves on like, you know, day 200 or whatever, and people see the photo and they're like, oof, you look rough. Are you sick? I mean, like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, yeah, it's rough down here. Am I 100% right now? Maybe not. Am I going to completely carry out this mission, do my job, and come home? Yeah. Yeah, I am. So leave me alone. So yeah, I will keep you guys updated and let you know if there do end up being any real concerns about the health of any of these astronauts. And I do get the sense that I think that some of these concerns are just goodwill, just, you know, people making sure that everyone's okay. But some of it, I don't know, it just seems a bit much. But you guys let me know what you think. Do you think their concerns are valid? Much ado about nothing? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video.
Butch and Sunny, thanks so much for taking the time. We're excited to talk to you again shortly before you come home. Have a great rest of your mission. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.